Hey friends, this is Sketch Dirt and I'm Marla. I'm so glad you're here. Today we are drawing sapphires. Okay, so to get started, I'm drawing sapphires today. I'm gonna to be drawing three different views. So I'm gonna be drawing a top view, a side view, and a three quarter view. And I'm doing that so that way when you're drawing your pictures, whichever view you need, you kind of have this as a reference to uh, apply and kind of refer to uh, for your own drawings. I also wanted to draw this at like a medium skill level. I didn't want to draw it too simple because that would take away from the dimensional and um, realistic elements. But then I also didn't want to draw it too uh, advanced because that would take up, um, it would be a bit more time consuming than just drawing at like a medium level where you kind of get the best of both worlds. It's gonna be uh, fairly quick to do, but then still keep the dimension and the realistic elements that you're gonna be looking for. Also, when I was drawing this, I wanted to use just a few uh, key tools for drawing. I didn't want to have like a lot of different colors or a lot of different instruments. I just picked a select few. So that way, um, that also keeps it at that medium skill level. So I'm gonna go through that real quick here and then we'll start drawing. So the first thing is, is I'm using a 2B pencil to draw out the initial shapes. Um, I'm using a bit darker pencil than what I normally use. I normally use like, I will use a 2B, um, but I like to use like an HB because that kind of lays in like a, a medium amount. So you have a bit more control over uh, the shading. But for this, I want a 2B. And the reason is, is because I want the lead to show up under uh, the Sharpie marker because I'm going to go through and color over the whole thing with a blue Sharpie marker. This is just a regular um, drugstore Sharpie. It's not a special blue. It's the classic Sharpie blue. I am using a brush tip marker. I really love these. Um, the color just covers on really smooth and, and quick, but a regular drugstore Sharpie works exactly the same. I tried both of them. The next thing I'm gonna use are colored pencils, and I'm using three different colors of color pencils. I'm using a white, I'm using a blue that is the same color as the Sharpie marker I used, and then I'm using a very dark, blue sharpie that's darker than this this medium color it's a little tough to tell on camera the difference um you can if you don't have this darkest blue color you could also use a black you're just going to want to be more careful and more sparing with the color because like the 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 dark shading is going to build up that much quicker the specific colors and the specific tools are listed in the description box of this video um, the way it is for all of my videos. So definitely you can check there for the specific colors so you know what to get. Um, the last thing I use is an ink pen, just a white, uh, white ink pen. And this you can find at any craft store, you can find it at the drugstore. If you can't find anything like this or you just don't wanna go out and get it, you can use whiteout, you can use nail enamel, you can use acrylic paint. Um, just grab a toothpick or a very like fine, a small brush and you can just dot in the details uh, very easily. And I'm just saying that because Sometimes you just don't, this might be one of the tools that you just don't wanna go out and get, but you would, I'm pretty sure you'd have any of these other things around the house that'll work just as well for your drawing. And that's about it. I'm super excited to get started, so let's go. Okay, so I've drawn squares that measure three inches by three inches, and then I've taken them and split them in half, both vertically and horizontally. To get started here, I am drawing the top view, and I went ahead and drew in the diagonal lines at each corner, and that is to help with drawing the circle shape and then drawing in uh, the facets that'll, that'll be coming in next. Um, I really wanted to be able to draw this circle freehanded, but you need a little, you still need some guidelines to do that. And even as you can see here, it's not a perfect circle, but as we go along, you'll see how everything shapes up. There's just like little 
little uh, corrections, little erasing, and then every, by the end, everything looks exactly the way I want it to look. I'm putting in the facets now, and if you'll see the way I'm doing this, where it's very kind of orderly and organized, I found that this is the best way to do this when you're working with such a complicated shape. You just kind of want to take your time and put some logic into it. I don't normally do that when I'm drawing. I like to kind of be all over the place and just kind of go wherever I want to go. But when you're drawing something that's very uh, technical and the measurements are pretty precise, you want to keep with that and keep um, your drawing very organized in terms of how you proceed. So that way you like don't get confused and you have everything exactly where you want it to be. So I've started on the side view now, and as you can see, I've put in all the measurements. I'm starting to put in the facets. And this portion right here, these facets that look like X's, I am drawing each line individually because what I found is when I drew them like X's, it didn't look quite right. It didn't look like... Um, it didn't look like a faceted shape. And again, that's just where uh, being very technical, being very organized in your drawing will come in really handy. So I've already gotten started on the three quarter view here. And you will see as we go along that this is a combination of the top view and the side view. It naturally is already like that, but for this drawing, I wanted very logical steps that match each other. I did that on purpose so that you could see how each angle, how how each uh, part of the drawing works for each angle and then it fits in a very orderly way. If you were drawing this in a very, in a, in a more realistic, in a much more dimensional way, it wouldn't quite work out like that. I wanted this to be simplified enough so that you could uh, do something like this where you could draw all three views and they all kind of match and make sense together. So I'm going through now and I'm erasing everything. I do not normally talk about erasing in my video, but it's pretty important for how I've drawn this because really at this point you're kind of drawing with the eraser. You're, you're picking and choosing what to keep on the paper and that's as important as drawing with the pencil. So as you see here, I am taking my eraser and I am going through and very orderly, uh, in a very orderly way, just going through and erasing things one by one. Uh, you don't want to skip around because it gets very confusing as to how these lines go. I tried doing that. I tried just jumping in and getting started and realized that I kind of needed to, um, approach the erasing the same way I did with the drawing and keep it very organized and do things one by one and um, not skip around a lot, particularly on this top view where these little faceted shapes, like it can get very confusing what's supposed to stay and what's supposed to go. But if you look at this top view of the circle, you'll see now this looks much more like a perfect circle than it did when I started. And so that's why I say, just jump in, don't start over a whole bunch, just kind of like keep going and work it out as it's on the page. So right now I'm taking my pencil. Uh, this is a 2B pencil. It's a little bit darker than what I normally use. I like to use an HB, but um, I'm using a 2B pencil here to go through and just go over all of the lines to make sure they're clear and um, that you can see them. I'm not pressing too hard. You don't want the lines to be too dark, but you do want them to be dark enough so that way you can, um, what I'm gonna do next is color over everything with a Sharpie marker, and you wanna be able to see the lines through the Sharpie marker. And uh, as you can see here, this blue is very dark, so I had to use that darker 2B pencil so that you could still see those pencil marks through there. Again, you don't want it to be too dark because um, of all the coloring and all the shading that's going to go into the picture. And if the pencil portion, that underneath, that underneath pencil portion is basically a skeleton and it holds the whole drawing together. It isn't like you don't see your skeleton 
on the outside of your body, like, or through your skin, you, your skeleton is on the inside and it just kind of frames everything and holds everything up. And what this Sharpie marker is doing is it's really putting the skin on everything and it's really kind of like covering up that skeleton, um, but giving it the entire look. Also with the Sharpie marker, I took my time, I moved the paper around because I, and, and just drew everything in because I wanted really sharp, crisp lines and really wanted, um, cause that's, again, it's the skin. It's gonna, it's really makes the shape of the piece. So I'm going through now with a white colored pencil and I'm drawing over all uh, the pencil marks. And this is why you don't want the pencil to be too dark because then you can't cover it up with the white colored pencil. I tried that. I tried like, what if I just color this really dark so that you definitely see it because it's kind of tough to see through the blue. And it turns out that it, it ruins the picture. It just doesn't work out because, um, again, you don't want that skeleton showing underneath the skin. You want um, it to be tucked underneath uh, that blue color. And then this, this white colored pencil is going to be your guidelines for all the shading um, and everything that you do next. So I'm taking my medium blue pencil. This is the blue that matches the Sharpie marker. And I'm going through and covering everything evenly. And you might be wondering, like, why did I take the white colored pencil and then draw this and then cover it up. It's because basically what I'm doing at this point is I'm creating like layers of color and that's because there isn't a lot of faceting, I've replaced all that faceting and, and all those uh, dimensions of the actual jewels with basically more color and kind of richer dimensional color. And so that white colored pencil puts in the first layer this medium blue pencil is gonna put in the second layer. And then what you're gonna see is we're gonna put all the elements and all the details in. And you've built up this kind of like all these layers and so they just glide on very smoothly and kind of like um, not evenly. As you can see here, I'm going through again and outlining everything. And you see that the color is not smooth and not perfect. And it's got this like beautiful kind of uneven look because what you want this to look like is you don't want this to look like edges necessarily. You want this to look like light. You want it to look like the light is shining through uh, your gemstones, your um, your sapphires, your diamonds, any any jewels that you're you're drawing, and um, this kind of sandwiched color helps do that. Uh, it helps kind of break it, make things a bit uneven, just like the way light is, and it's not. Um, very smooth. Now, if you did want really smooth uh, color, that would just, it would still work. It would make your jewels look more graphic, more bold, and less dimensional. It would make it look a little flatter on your paper, which is a technique that could work really well. So for the shading I'm doing, there is, I did figure out a system for this. I wanted it to be I wanted it to be very organized. I wanted it to be very logical. If you were drawing this realistically, it wouldn't necessarily be like this, but I wanted this to be a medium skill level drawing. So a combination between being uh, very simple and then very difficult, something that you could do in uh, a couple hours, basically. Um, it wouldn't take you all day to do. So I've drawn, I've colored in the three triangles uh, at the top portion of this view, I've colored in three triangle, like uh, two and a half, three and a half triangles at the bottom. And then for the top portion, I've colored in half of the area with the white colored pencil. I'm now applying that same system with the dark blue colored pencil, but I'm doing it in reverse. So the top triangles are getting like two and a half, three and a half, um, three and a half of those triangles colored in. And then I'm gonna do the bottom triangles, like three of them the same way I did the white area at the top. And when you're doing this, you just wanna take your time, think it through. It's kind of, even though this is very kind of logical the way I'm doing it, or there's kind of a system to it, when you're doing your drawing, you're also just kind of feeling it out. Like keep in mind, this is actually pretty large. It's three inches by three inches. And I would imagine that when you're doing your drawings, 
I bet these are not going to be that large. They might be, but I, d I don't think so. I think they're going to probably be a lot smaller. And so you're just going to adjust as you go and add in the details as you go. And I would think like if, if it was even larger than three inches, you would probably want a few more details. But this is a jumping off point for whichever direction you're wanting, you want to go. And you just kind of keep moving back and forth um, in the areas where you put the light color on the opposite side you put the dark color and and vice versa so for this top portion when you draw that those facets on the inside keep in mind that you're looking through your sapphire you these are not at the top and so you very gently color those portions in so for this side view you're gonna see what I've done is taken the same thought process for the top view and applied it here, but it's for uh, the side view. And then that's gonna translate over to the three quarter view. So on this area on the side, uh, there's gonna be three angles about, uh, well, there's one full one and then two half ones that are colored in. And then the triangles on the side, uh, they're colored in, but again, not all the way through. There's only one of them that's solidly colored. I color the top edge of a uh, top area of one of the facets, and then I put a little shading on the side. Um, nothing as things just, um, I wanted the color to be a little, again, keeping that faceted, clear, kind of see-through look um, where the light is shining through. Now these are those three dark blue triangles, the same as you see on the top view. It's just now we have the side view. I'm putting in uh, half of the color of the blue on one of the angles, and I'm gonna go through and just put fill in more uh, blue in those areas and just kind of work to even things out. Uh, as you're going through, again, just take your time, just kind of draw things in as you, you know, as it looks, um, you kind of can't mess this up because I tried it a whole bunch of different ways. And even though this is very systematic and there's kind of like, when you do this, you do this, your own drawing doesn't have to be like that. It still works out if you're kind of just putting the color all over. And I know this because I tried it. Like I, for the video, I wanted to make sure that anyone could pick this up and do it themselves and just kind of draw it the way they wanted to draw it. So you don't necessarily have to follow this exactly for it to work out. And again, um, well, if you're just if you're just drawing like one view, if you're not drawing like all three of the views, you have much more like freedom to kind of go where you want to with it because there's nothing you're not comparis comparing it to any uh, any other side or any other angle of uh, the gem or the sapphire that you're drawing. So I'm drawing the three quarter view now, and this is a, a translation of both that that side view and that top view. And so I'm just going through and kind of following that. And it's a lot easier now because I have those other two views drawn to go through. And as you can see here, like I'm I'm putting in the color pretty pretty gently. I'm letting the pencil kind of move the pigment and the wax around on the page because that all of that that build up was for this purpose so that like kind of you get that smeary beautiful blue effect and that it would um add dimension in the place of adding actual extra facets in i drew in half of the half of the white shading uh, and now I'm going through with the dark blue pencil and adding in those those triangles and just kind of like not filling in too many parts fully or just kind of shading shading it in as you as you go along here and just uh, moving through all over the piece. I really love this series so far I've drawn. Um, a ruby, I'm going to be drawing an emerald, I'm going to be drawing a diamond. I've drawn a very simplified diamond in pencil. I have that video. I'll link it in the description box uh, down below. And that was really kind of the inspiration and the jumping off point for this whole series of jewels in color. Like I wanted to just expand on that and make it uh, a little more advanced. So I'm going through here still with that dark blue pencil. This whole draw, all three of these drawings took about 
an hour to draw. And I had practiced this quite a bit. I'd, I'd been working on this series. And so I think I'm, I'm a bit quicker now than when I started. Definitely when I started. It, it, don't be surprised if it takes like a, a couple hours and just take your time and enjoy it and get the look that you want. And again, these jewels are very large. And so that's why it took longer. If yours are smaller, it's definitely not going to take this long to go through and draw everything. So now I'm at like the fun part. The part I really love is where I'm taking this white ink pen and I'm going through and I'm putting um, little blobs of color at each faceted point and then I'm dragging that white ink um, around the jewel shape and I'm being really careful to not put in super solid lines. Again, we're we're drawing the light. You're not really, this is the light, this is the sparkle, this is, you know, the dimensional shine of the piece. And so you're not putting in like really thick blocks of color because that's going to flatten it out. You really want this kind of like um, rough looking uh, shine and this rough looking color on top of your, your piece. And you're really just like, once you get those blobs of color in, you're just dragging that across the piece with your with your pen and then I apply that same technique with uh, the side view and I've sped this up but definitely take your time kind of don't go kind of gauge whether how much is too much and how much is too little because like at this point you're almost done so you don't really want to overdo it but um I can understand like how easy it is to get like excited and just kind of keep going because it's super fun to put this this element this final element into your your drawings and it's probably like it's what I was waiting for for the whole drawing like I was just like oh, I can't wait to put in the white ink and all the sparkle and just watch everything get more dimensional and just start to to pop on the on the page. And that is about it. Thank you so much for watching this. Like I said, I have a couple more drawings in this series. I'm going to be drawing an emerald. I'm going to be doing a diamond. And then I'm going to be doing a pearl. This is, it's so much fun. I love doing this. Thank you so much for watching. This is Sketch Dirt and I'm Marla. Bye.